Good morning, good morning. Good morning, happy Monday. We're talking about growing Michael Greens like we do every day. In an effort to be conscientious, we're going to do this fast. We're going to go through the morning care routine. Good morning, good morning. For our microgreens, we're going to give them the water that they need. We're going to check on their progress. This is just like an unboxing video. We're going to be seeing how these plants did overnight to get together. So if y'all could do me a favor, double tap, attack that screen. Let's get the likes out of this world. But let's begin. The first thing we want to check on is this three-day-old tray. I'm going to show you seven trays and seven different stages of progression. And I also started a tray last night. So, in fact, we'll start there. I'm just going to pull this one to the top. Because this rack, uh, for this view I want to show you, is now full. So, these were sewn last night on live here. So all we got to do to care for these microgreens is take a spray bottle filled with filtered water, as you can see here. And we're going to spray them down just like this. All right, boom. That's that. Now all I got to do is take this tray. Put it back on top, press it down, put its weight back on top. I'm gonna move this back to the rack that it is, uh, it will be growing on. So let me, uh, sorry that nested inside there. Take that off, I'll put it back down out of the way. We're gonna let it do its, let it do its thing. If y'all could do me a favor, double tack attack that screen. We wanna help as many people as possible grow microgreens at home all right next thing look at that tray now this tray is half pea and half spicy salad mix this was started three days ago yes i did take a day off in between of sowing new, new seeds because i had enough going at that time so same thing again the last tray was grown in a jute mat. This tray is grown in organic soil. I tend to like to grow pea and sunflower um, in organic soil. I think they do a better job of germinating. That's been my personal experience. Where are y'all watching from this morning? So we're going to spray this down again like this. Now, I want to highlight a couple things here. You can see those. What's going on, my friend? Coming in from Iowa, Alabama. You see those peas? They're sprouting. Let's see if there's any roots coming through. You can see there a few of the pea are coming through and a few of the spicy salad roots are coming through. So these will be ready to probably go into bottom watering uh, tonight. That will be my goal my plan for those of you just joining in we are talking about growing microgreens i'm showing you my daily care routine how i care for my my young plants all right so we put the top back on we put the weight back on press it down all right we're good to go good morning again my friend from western new york coming in from jay-z all right, if you have any questions at any time, just uh, just let me know. Let me know. I'm in Dallas, Texas, just so y'all know. So this is a tray full of purple radish. The weight is to help the seeds germinate more quickly. This is a tray full of purple radish. Isn't that pretty? All right, so again, filtered water we want to spray them down 
boom, just like that. We're gonna look, oh man, look at those roots. You see how well developed those roots are? This is a great indication that these are ready to be bottom watered now instead of top misted. And they're ready to go under blackout. So you can see how they're kind of off the soil now. They have nice leaves, small leaves forming. They haven't opened up like those, which I'll show you in a minute. So instead of putting the weight on these, we're going to put these in the blackout. So all we're going to do, well, first, let's get the, let's get the, let's get the bottom watering tray filled. So all we got to do is lift up this edge. You can see that tray is supposed to dry other than the overrun from top watering or misting. We're just going to add some filtered water to that tray. Make sure the roots are touching, which in this case won't be hard. There's actually something very specific I'm focused on. I'll see, can I show you? There's some little root hairs on that root that's searching for water. So what I'm looking for is when I dip that down, do those root hairs get wet and kind of go away. Once they've done that, I know I have enough water in that tray. They're good to go. So what I'm gonna do now is put these into blackout. Like this. All right. I'm just gonna put that on top to keep it. It's not doing any weight, just so it doesn't like, stays put. So that tray is done now. Let's move to the next one. Now this bad boy is another tray of purple radish and another tray, half purple radish, half sunflower. So these came out underweight yesterday, just due to the progress and where they were at. I, I didn't see any need to put this tray into blackout. So that's another thing about farming is you just don't do the same thing over and over without any real thought or critical analysis. You have to to look at your plants to see how they're doing and then decide what is the best next step given a set of principles that you follow. So in this case, the roots are doing well. You can see even in the back, the sunflower is doing well, the radish is doing well. So I just took them out, bottom water, and we're just gonna let those go. They have enough water still for today, it looks like, at least to this evening. So this care routine happens once in the morning and once in the evening. That's how I do it. Next tray. We have a nice full tray of broccoli. Looks great, looks full, looks lush. This was grown in jute mat. So those last three were grown in organic soil. These smaller seeds, uh, I like to grow in jute mat. It's a little cleaner. Uh, the mat that I grow in is biodegradable. You can also reuse it if you want to go through that, that effort. Um, but yeah. So this one, look at those roots. <laughs> is this incredible? You know, one thing about growing in a more hydroponic method is you really get to see the roots and how they're formed, what they're doing, if they're healthy. You don't always get a chance to see that when you grow in uh, soil or more traditional methods. So, again, we're just going to fill that tray up. You have to be more careful and really watch your water levels with these trays as these plants mature, especially in these smaller grow trays, because the roots displace enough water such that you just can't put enough water in the, you can't put as much water in the tray, there we go, without causing like an overflow or drowning your plant. So it becomes more critical as time goes on that you're really watching your plants coming in the morning, coming in the evening, make sure they have what they need so they don't dehydrate throughout the day and then wilt all right next tray this is a tray of spicy salad again looking full looking lush looking tall so you see the last tray is still a little short this tray is taller hey it's just a day older so these will probably look like this tomorrow roots looking good you want to add a little bit of water again just a little bit gotta be careful and that's that all right, cool. Next tray. Of course, of course. And if you guys have any questions, shoot. 
This is a half tray of purple radish and a half tray of spicy salad. And we're going to do that again. Look at the roots. Everything's touching, looking good, man. Some of these roots are just tremendously long at this point. And that's a good thing. All right, and that's that. That tray is full. So this, the last tray was seven days old. This tray, I'm sorry, eight. This tray is now nine days old. It was grown, uh, I'm sorry, eight. Sunday before last. Fill it up. And that's that. So this tray will be harvested this evening. Um, yeah. So anyway, I'll give you just kind of a, a quick overview of what's going on in the farm. What we got going on. This is eight days, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Just like that. So that's what I do at my farm every day. I grow microgreens at home. I do these lives to show you how easy it is to care for your microgreens once they're planted. They're not hard to plant even. Uh, I'm doing a couple other grow experiments just to find even easier ways to help people get started. So I'll show you another one I'm doing. This is a tray that I've started in the lid of a clamshell tray. Just using something I had already. So in this case, I filled it, you know, two thirds away with soil. I seeded it, I've been moistening it every day. I've been using just a bottle of water as the weight. And I've been using the bottom of the tray as the weight lid to put that down these won't go into blackout at all putting the plants into blackout is actually not a requirement but it's just a practice you can use if you're looking for your plants to grow in a specific way meaning i want them to be a bit more leggy so they'll be easier to harvest so i'll just do that i put my water bottle back on top that's that this is again a tray I just started yesterday and turn the lights on and uh, they're doing well man we have 71 people in here this is amazing we're growing microgreens y'all so if y'all do me a favor if y'all don't mind double tap attack the screen let's get our light count out of this world so we show up for more people help them grow food at home get into this this wild world of microgreens and uh, answer any questions you have i'm gonna pull this camera back i'm gonna jump in the frame and i'm going to answer any questions that you might have so let's do it all right guys hope y'all are doing well I'm going to answer any questions you might have regarding microgreens. Give me one second. I'm going to turn my light on so it looks a little better. All right. There we are. And then we turn the light on. Boom. Just like that. And now I look like you can see me. But back here, I have my microgreens going. And I'll just talk a little bit about why I started growing food at home. Give me one second, guys. I started growing food at home. Yeah, yeah. Uh, broccoli sprouts. That's this tray is broccoli. This tray is broccoli. And uh, yeah, I sure do. That's the first thing I started growing was broccoli microgreens. All right, so I got into growing microgreens because I wanted to have um, produce that I could trust and produce that was fresh. 
And not like this week fresh. I'm talking about this minute fresh. When you go plants like this at home, you can literally just take it out of your garden anytime and just eat it because you grew it. You know what's in it. You trust the farmer because the farmer is you. All right? That's reason number one. Reason number two is, again, I'm located in South Dallas County, Texas. And in Dallas County, Texas, there are areas in this urban environment that are food deserts. And I decided the best thing that I could do to help out with that was to start growing produce in this urban environment. And if I do that, it has a multiplicative effect of benefits. Benefit number one, I can offer my product to my local community, to those individuals who want to improve their health or improve their nutrition, but I have no idea where to get started. Or if you're in a food desert, you may not even have access to that produce. If you've never been in Texas, the saying is true. Everything is bigger in Texas. Now, what I'm getting at by saying that is this. This area I live in, the DFW Metroplex, if you don't own a vehicle, it's like in Texas, it's like this thing. We don't count distances in miles. It's always in minutes. And kind of the minimum minutes to get anywhere is 20 for most things. So just imagine if your grocery store is three miles away. Now, for most Texans who are fortunate enough to have a vehicle or maybe to be a little bit more fluent, no big deal. You jump in your car and you go. But imagine if you don't have a, you know, transportation readily available to you, you can end up with some very poor health outcomes. So tying this back to my why is to help out with it. I can offer a subscription to these people to say, hey, I got these microgreens. I can deliver them to you every week based on just tell me what you want me to grow for you. I'll grow it for you based on what I'm offering. And now you have fresh greens available to you regularly and affordably. That's reason number two. Reason number three is I think that urban controlled environment agriculture or indoor farming or greenhouse farming, I think that's going to be a very significant player in agriculture moving forward. Not just in the distant future that we can't see, but right now. A lot of the food that you buy at the grocery store is already grown in a greenhouse or in a controlled environment agriculture. A lot of tomatoes are grown that way. A lot of leafy greens are grown that way. So I am just participating in an emerging trend in our market. You know, I'm all about helping people and I'm all about business. When you put those together, if you help people and you do good business, you'll be doing a benefit to your community and your community will do a benefit to you. That's called a symbiotic relationship that is mutually beneficial. And I'm all about that. So those are some of the reasons why I started growing food. One, help myself, my health, help my community and their health. And three, to build a fantastic business. Put all those three things together. That's something I can get behind. Something I can get excited about every day. That's why I go live every day to show you that if you want to grow these plants just for yourself, or if you want to grow them and start a business, I don't care why you want to grow them. I just want you to grow them. And I want to help you get started. So, Urban Grower Supply is not just a, a flash in the pan. This is something I'll be doing for an extended period of time to help people grow. This year is the year of the microgreens. I'm going to take this year to really dial in how to get better at this, how to do well, how to help more people, how to provide opportunities for those in my community to have access to food and access to gainful employment. That's my focus for this year. Next year, I'll start growing something else. And if I get this done a little faster, I may jump ahead. But I'm committed to it, to doing those things. I want to help people grow more food, different types of food over time, offer the support that's required, and then offer those products that will make it easier for you to get started and keep going. 
That's why I'm doing this. I like to be fully transparent. I like to answer questions. I like to help people. Another thing is I think it's important for people to know how to grow food. Why? 200 years ago, give me this one second, y'all. Two hundred years ago, almost everybody on this earth knew how to grow food. If you don't believe me, look it up. Over ninety percent of people were involved in the production of food for humanity. Now, that's because we didn't have the technologies we have today, and technology is great. It sure is. I'm using technology right now to converse with you, and I think that that's amazing. Then a hundred years ago is about half, and now it's like less than five percent. Now, why do I think that's a problem? It's a problem because 100% of us have to eat. We have to have access to nutrition. And it's not that I believe that everyone should be involved in farming. It's that I believe that more people should have the knowledge of how to do it and the ability to do that easily if they want to. A lot of us, myself included, until maybe the last six months, I thought of farming as I was fortunate enough to, I didn't grow up on a farm, but my family has a farm. We have a family farm. Arkansas where I'm from so I didn't spend a lot of time there but I did see it and I know some of the basics but point being that I had this idea in my mind that food is like you I needed 80 acres like the family farm I needed a tractor I needed all this stuff we technology has advanced such that you don't need all that anymore for certain things. Now, for certain things, you may need that, but for other things, you don't. We have hydroponic growing technology, which is not new, but there's more products available to you, and it's more accessible now. You know, we have full spectrum LED lighting that is affordable. We are having, this is like a warehouse rack you may use in a small fulfillment center to store things in your home. That's affordable we have plastics that are affordable we have shipping expedited shipping that's affordable so with the confluence of all of these advances i can now grow literally i could grow probably 10 to 15 pounds of microgreens on this rack every single week maybe 20 to 30 pounds I think the last time I grew this out fully, I had, no, I had like 30 pounds in here. It only took me 10 days to grow 30 pounds of food in six square feet of space in a spare bedroom in my house. So just imagine that growing microgreens. Yes, I do grow. I don't grow everything indoors, but I grow my microgreens indoors. I'm growing some potatoes outside right now in a grow bag, and I'm growing some cantaloupes outside in like a planter. But the bulk of my plant production does happen indoor. Uh, I just put the other ones outside because they're taking too much space, but they, they lived a good chunk of their life <laughs> inside before I did that. So I'm just like out on my patio and kind of uh, semi-sunny semi-shady environment but they're doing just fine and plus the spring has been like unusually mild so far here in, in texas so yeah um so doing you can grow strawberries inside peppers i'm growing a bell pepper uh down there i won't pull it up right now but yeah i want people to know how to do these things Let's see, control the food, control the people. We're seeing it big time right now. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. The benefits of microgreens. The benefits of microgreens are, from a farming perspective, they're easy to grow. So if you never, if you don't consider yourself to have a green thumb, I go live every day and show people how to like get started uh, and how to care for them. Easy to care for, easy to start, quick to harvest. That way you get that that quicker gratification gratification for your efforts and that will encourage you hopefully and motivate you to keep going uh, from a health perspective packed full of nutrition small form factor very flexible 
You can put these in, uh, you can eat them as a salad. You can saute them if you want. You can put them in smoothies. You can put them on sandwiches. You can dehydrate them and then like blend them up, turn them into uh, powders, like super green powders. What up though? You can do all that, all right? It's very, just think about how you would eat other greens and all this. You can do that. Now, let's talk about varieties. In my farm right now, I have seeds for purple radish, spicy salad mix, regular salad mix, dun pea, sunflower, Swiss chard, which I haven't mastered yet. So I'm going to be trying that again this week. I have uh, broccoli, which I don't think I said yet. I have popcorn and beet. That's what I have in my farm right now. That's what I'm growing. I'm not growing dandelion at this time. Um, I probably will later this year, but probably like the regular dandelion. And I think I might grow those hydroponically using the nutrient film technique. But once I get to that point, I'll show y'all what we got going on. That's what I grow in my farm now. And again, my farm is at my house, which is in the city. So I don't have a big yard. I have like less than a quarter acre here. Way less than a quarter acre here. I have a small amount of space, but I do have patience, persistence, diligence, the desire to do, and then I follow through it now I am doing. Oh, dope, dope. That's cool. Anyway, y'all, I got to get ready to get out through here. I got some stuff I need to go do. So I want to jump on, share my story, sh share what I'm growing, how I'm growing it. Appreciate the love. Appreciate all the likes. About to get out of here. Y'all have a great day. Keep loving, keep growing, keep going. Until the next time. Uh, I don't have flies. I have gnats. I make this gnat mix. Water, apple cider vinegar, sugar, a little bit of Don soap takes care of them just fine anyway guys i really gotta go love y'all take it easy